I've been working on a project for the past couple years that involves creating a CAD file of an iPhone enclosure, including all of the internal details. Now, I've tried a couple different approaches, uh, including milling it down layer by layer in a CNC mill and then sticking it face down on a flatbed scanner. And while that works, it's super tedious. I thought, surely there must be a better way. I've looked at a couple different approaches, but recently Creality approached me and asked me if I'd like to try out their new 3D scanner, the Raptor. I previously looked at 3D scanners for this, but a lot of the affordable scanners I found just weren't accurate enough. But Creality claims that this scanner is accurate to 0.02 millimeters. Now, just for reference, 0.1 millimeters is the thickness of a human hair or a piece of paper and we're talking about one-fifth of that. So I'm really excited to try this out. All right, let's crack this open. Ooh. Oh, they have a nice Pelican case for this. That's pretty cool. Did not expect that. Oh, nice. Look at that. That's pretty cool. My understanding is this is a glass reference surface for calibration. It's a cool idea. I didn't know you needed to calibrate a 3D scanner, but maybe to get 0.02 millimeter accuracy, you do. And then reflective dots. This is like retro reflective material, which maybe will show up on camera. There are some dots and markers and things. So in theory, this can scan without markers but for some things, markers make it better. Um, so they have various dots you can put on. We'll play with those. Yeah, they've got little ones and big ones. Six millimeters, three millimeters. <laughs> this one's for big things, this one's for little things. So they've got this Creality Scan software. And this plugged in. So there are two modes on this scanner. There's blue laser mode and there's uh, infrared or near infrared mode. It's interesting because in the specs that I have that Creality sent me, it says blue layers laser is up to 60 FPS, but this is saying only 50. And then infrared mode, they say only goes up to 20, but this is saying up to 30. So because this says a, a performance test, I'm assuming that it might be GPU or CPU limited, but this is, you know, this is an M2 Max, so it should be relatively performant. We're going to give this a shot. The idea is that the blue light mode is for accuracy um, and really good detail, but it does require those markers. And if you're scanning something so small you can't put markers on the object, you can put it on this desk pad, which is part of why they provide that. You just get something simple to start with, like a bolt or something. Um, and then if you're scanning a larger object, you put the markers on the object itself. And then infrared mode is for like faces and bodies and sculptures, bigger stuff. It lets you scan without putting markers on anything. And it's a bit faster, but it's not quite as accurate. Using a resolution of 0.1, we can achieve sufficiently good detail for most objects. So we're gonna test that because I really want something that's more accurate than 0.1. All right, let's give this a shot. I think this is gonna have a learning curve here. Watch its name. Let's see, let me grab a bolt or something. That'd be interesting. So, we're gonna try blue line scanning mode. Let's just put in bolt. And then, let's see, let's put some markers down. It doesn't really matter too much where you put these, is my understanding. Kinda of just scatter them around. And so my understanding is that the markers are used so that the scanner has a point of reference so it knows where it is in space. And this one also has an accelerometer built into it, which is interesting. Well, let's try this first. We may as well. Okay, so we've got this guy here. <clears throat> Place the calibration board horizontally. Align the center point of the scanner with the center point of the calibration board. I feel like I know that. Tilt the scanner to the left so that the center line of the scanner forms a 15 degree angle. This is like a hard game. Got it. Okay, calibrating. Okay, we are sort of picking up the object, but I feel like... Okay, also there is like some buttons up here. So there's zoom in, zoom out. This is probably exposure. Oh, that's brightness. Oh, that might be brightness of the lights. 
but I think, but there's a play button here. I think I'm supposed to hit that one already. Okay, scan your model. Yeah, that's working. Uh, it does seem to retain tracking pretty well. And this is a shiny thing, um, which some scanners have a hard time with. So. Uh, do that? Yeah. It also regains tracking pretty easily, which is good. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the whole thing to turn green. See, it's got kind of a carve out underneath there. Hmm. Okay, what do we do now? Maybe just hit this? Okay, so let's complete the scan and see how we did. Ooh, all right, this is doing pretty well. All right, so we've got some texture on the markings on the head. Definitely some good good threads and stuff. Um, what we don't have, is, which is kind of obvious, is like we don't have the bottom, right? It's a big hollow shell. So then the idea is then we can export this to PLY or an STL, or an OBJ, so that we can then import it into our modeling software. So to scan this properly, we really need to scan it from multiple angles in theory, and then, um, we could merge those. I think I kind of know what I'm doing now. Now let's try something a bit more geometrically complex. These are some mechanum wheels that I got from my friend Esden. I was thinking they might make for an interesting scan. Let's try these markers, marker dots on them. And we'll put some more on this pad at the edges. Let's see if that helps. Give this a shot. Now I don't need quite as much resolution here. So I'm gonna go with the recommended 0.15 millimeter. No color mapping. We can exclude the flat face. All right. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool. What I will say is this is not a terribly fast process. It's not like you can just sit down and then 10 seconds, boom, have a scan. You gotta really, you gotta wave this thing around a lot. You gotta sort of stay the right distances and whatnot. A little challenging. Okay, now let's flip this over and do another scan on the other side. Um, let's turn off the exclusive face. Oh, there we go. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna call that good for now. Could it be better? Yes. I just need to spend more time on it. But let's let's see how this is. I've been learning the more cleanup you can do on your raw data points, the better, the better off everything else is. All right, looking pretty good. Okay, now let's process them. All right, that's done. So now we need to stitch these together. So let's do it based on features. So I think what I'm gonna do is do it on the ends of these bolts. So what we need to do is select at least three points in common between the two scans so it knows how to align them. Oh, not shabby. Oh, that came out really nice. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I think based on that, I could really recreate this whole thing. That's pretty cool. Wow, that looks really nice. So next, I wanna try scanning an iPhone shell. I think maybe put this, like stick this down with some double-sided tape here, just so I don't accidentally move it. Just use a little piece of this VHB tape which stands for very high bond. Okay, I think I need to put down more markers too. I'm gonna put this at 0.1 resolution. Let's give this a shot. So I'm trying to get this image to turn all green here and get rid of the orange. The color of the markers indicates whether I'm too close or too far. Green is good, blue is too far, red is too close. I think it was good we put a few tracking dots inside. That is helping. Trying to get detail like up under these edges here. Yeah, it's hard to get scans on the side, on, particularly on the outsides. And I'm wondering if the answer to that is actually doing more than two scans, not just flipping it over. 
but is actually like putting it on edge. And what I've discovered is the LED on the back here turns colors based on whether you're too close or too far. And it corresponds to these colors here. Gosh, look at that. How well it's tracking. I'm really impressed with the tracking on this. Okay, let's stop there. This has collected 1.6 million data points. So this, this blue laser mode is supposed to be the more accurate mode. It's supposed to be accurate to like 0.02 millimeters, as opposed to the near infrared, which is supposed to be um, easier to use, faster to use, but not as, as accurate. I think it's 0.1 millimeter, depending on the size of the object. So that accuracy can go up as far as two millimeters if you're scanning something much larger. We can do some post-processing. So let's run it through its paces, ultra detail the resolution as far down as we can go. Uh, let's turn sensitivity way up, that might be our issue. I don't know, let's crank it all the way up to one. All right, getting there on the optimization here. I think this is a lot better. It's definitely crisper. Like look at how crisp these edges are here and the edges on the, on the screw mounts, on some of them anyway. Okay, there is some tuning to be done here. I'm gonna try this one more time and just see if we can get a little bit better results out of it. I've tried a couple different things, but I think the best way to get a good scan is gonna be to scan all six sides of it and merge them together. And I've got markers on all the sides so that I have reference points to glue together the various scans. All right, let's try that. Okay, let's add another scan. Now let's do the other side. Now we're just trying to get as much detail in here as we can. Okay, that was the last scan. I've got all these labeled in here and cleaned up. With a little bit of effort, I got the mesh pulled into Fusion 360. I wanted to pull it into Fusion 360 because I wanted to compare it to the CAD model that I made using some different techniques that I feel like at this point is pretty accurate. You'll see that in an upcoming video in a few days and why I'm doing this. So I've got them perfectly aligned and we can just toggle them on and off and you can see it is pretty darn accurate. Dimensionally accurate, um, it's really aligning pretty closely with a lot of the details. So I think the big thing is just to clean up the noise, see if I can get a little bit of a cleaner scan, but I'm really happy with the accuracy of this. Next, I wanna try out the infrared mode and for that, I think I need an assistant. Ambrose, come here. I wanna try scanning Ambrose the dog here. The main question is, is he gonna be able to stay still enough? You wanna stay still? I just woke you up from a nap, so hopefully. Uh, let's say we're scanning a face. Yep, this is gonna be a challenge. <laughs> Cause he's now laid down. Okay, let's start over. Oh, oh. Boy. Oh. <laughs> no, no, you? Well, let's see what we get out of this. <laughs> I mean, not terrible. <laughs> we could, uh, let's try adding the new scan. Okay. Stay. Line these now. Oh, all right. Where is it? Good boy. Good. All right. Point cloud merging. How does this work? Oh, we have to optimize first. Okay. We're just going to go auto, full auto on these. Hey. Oh, that's pretty good. This is actually not a terrible way of doing this. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. All right, let's do auto meshing. I didn't know whether that was gonna work very well, but yeah, this actually seems pretty good. <laughs> okay, so now we have a mesh, which if I did some more scans, <laughs> he's got one eye open and one eye squinting. Um, if we did some more scans, I could probably fill this out, but then I can do color mapping. We should get a full color ambrose. Hey, that looks pretty good. 
That looks really good. Not bad. We have some color differences because he was moving around and uh, we've got weird lighting for the for this set background. Um, so they, this side is picking up some of the blue lighting because I think I was, I was getting him from the back, but we could totally do that in a better lit area. That's really good. Like, there's some pretty good detail here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this, not just for the iPhone stuff, but also uh, just random projects. I've got some ideas. I wanna scan Ambrose some more. But yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this so far. Overall, I have a little bit of mixed feelings about this. I think for its price point, it's pretty accurate. I'll be honest, I'm having a hard time getting good results repeatedly, specifically with the iPhone. I've been trying for the past few days a couple different ways of scanning it and getting really a really high quality result and stitching all the results together and scanning it on six sides with put markers on this, I removed the marker pad. What I'm learning is I'm not sure it's specific to this, to this 3D scanner. I think it is more a case of 3D scanning, just like 3D printing, is a skill set and it's a bit of an art as much as it is a science. And it's not just like you can push one button and get a perfect scan. It really is something that you need to practice at, and I'm realizing I'm still a beginner. However, I love how compact this is and um, the handheld nature. The software tracks really well, so um, I know I've, I've used 3D scanning software on my phone, and this tracks far better than those. I've lost tracking far fewer times. Um, it's not frustrating in that regard. The desktop software I found a few bugs in, um, a few things that just don't work the way they seem like they should. Things like halos around some of the markers sometimes. I found some geometry kind of appearing out of nowhere. I've had some problems stitching two scans together. It's all kind of stuff I can work around, but it's a little frustrating at times. But I also really like th the fact that this has both scanning modes uh, built in. It has the blue line, seven line laser mode and it has the near infrared um, that does full color uh, and doesn't require all the markers. Uh, I think it's quite cool to have both of those in one device um, where I can do a bunch of different projects with um, just one scanner rather than having to have multiple for different, different use cases. So price, this goes for $1,499, $1,499. Uh, but right now, Creality is offering a 20% off discount until December 3rd. So go to the link down in the description and you can get it for just $1,199 until December 3rd. I'm looking forward to using this on a bunch of future projects, including continuing work on scanning iPhone shells. Quite excited about that. I just need to do some more learning here. So that's it for now. I'll see you again next time.